What's up, guys? It's been a little while since I've posted a newer lesson on a breakdown of a song, but I've had a lot of requests for a ton of different songs, and I've done a ton of different 30-second drum lessons trying to break apart those grooves real softly uh, for you guys and kind of kind of let you see what those grooves are about in a quick fashion. Uh, this will be just a touch longer lesson, and it's actually going to be on one of my favorite Led Zeppelin tunes, uh, which is Rock and Roll. I love this groove, and too often online, I'm, I'm having to post this because too often online, I've seen it broken down incorrectly. I've seen sheet music made incorrectly, and I'm just tired of it, dead gummit. Go watch Bonham play it, and you will see how it is played. Uh, so I'm going to break it apart correctly. We just actually have started in the live lessons a drum cover week because I have a lot of guys that take the lessons that actually gig every week. They're out there working, working, and I know what it's like to be in the trenches working. I spent three years in New Orleans working six to seven nights a week, playing 10 to 12 hour, uh, hours a day, sometimes double shifts. And so I know what it's like to have your bread and butter be your playing and to pick apart these songs. Um, and so we're doing drum cover week because so many of them are working drummers and want to know how to pick apart these songs, learn the styles. And so we delved into this really deeply. And this is going to be somewhat of a shallow lesson for this. We're not going to get into the styles and the types of fills that he does for this thing. We're simply going to get into two things. You can expect two things from this. The confusing intro that I've seen written out way too wrong, way too many times. And then we're going to get into the very simple groove that Bonham uses that is so just sick. It's sick. All right. Uh, the drum question though of the lesson is what is your favorite Led Zeppelin tune? That's all I want to know. What's your favorite Led Zeppelin tune? All right, so on with the lesson. Let's start with this intro, okay? For a while, this intro baffled me, and I was like, I don't know how he's starting it. And I didn't have, uh, you know, it was just like 12 years ago. I didn't have the, the YouTube to go on and Google and find out. And so what I did was I just sat there counting over and over, and I thought, this is not you know, maybe there's a measure of five, four. No, that's not correct. It wasn't laying out correctly. So I just counted how many beats and I found that there were 16 beats plus one and a half beat. So he had 17 and a half beats and I thought, okay, well that's four measures of four, four and the song is in four, four and then a beat and a half extra. He must start on the and of three and snap, he does. What he does is you don't hear the count off and it's just, it's deceptive to the ear. So it's one, two, three and four and one and two and 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 three and four and and you're into the song all right i'm going to play that slowly here at 90 bpm this song is usually around 165 but i'm going to play this at 90 bpm to let you see what that sounds like and again, this is played on the hi-hat straight eights with the snare drum ghosting anything that's not accented And then he's into the groove from there. So all that is is a deceptive place. You just don't hear the count off. It's kind of like the police walking on the moon. You don't hear that count off. And it's still, to this day, deceives my ear when I hear it to the point of uh, it'll play and I'll go, dead gum, and I didn't get one till the course. And I know where the count starts. I know. I'll, I'll sit there and I'll be like, one, two, dead gum, reverse it back. Three, four, one. God, son of a... And so I keep going back trying to count it correctly until the chorus. And all it is is it's so deceptive to the ear and so convincing that it's hard. Now, this one is that way. Until you hear this as the upbeat of three, it's going to be hard for your ear to understand it. But that is that is it. It's four bars and three eighth notes. So one, two, three, and four, and one, and two. So up to tempo, it would sound like this. And you'll notice that there's no kick drum there. He does, the, it, this, is, this is one of, he takes, this is a lesson in simplicity, this whole song. He waits to bring that kick drum in, in until the whole band comes in. And whenever the whole band comes in, it's like this onslaught of sound. And that's when he brings the kick drum in. Now let's get to the groove. The groove is a very simple rock groove. It's one and three on the kick drum. Essentially, he does some, some, uh, some different uh, flourishes and, and kind of uh, adding and accenting here and there. But for the main part, it's a one and three on the kick drum, eight notes on the hi-hat, two and four on the snare drum. 
That's usually where people start, stop, but that is not the groove. He ghosts eighth notes on the snare the whole time he's playing in accents two and four. So a shuffle would be played like this traditionally with the hi-hat and the snare playing the shuffle pattern. He plays this groove and I'm gonna close the hi-hat so you can hear it. This is how he plays the groove. That's it. It's such a simple addition and it fattens up this groove. And I've heard some guys say, oh, I just play it the regular way. I just play it without the, the uh, ghost notes on the snare drum and it sounds the same. And I'm like, no, it doesn't sound the same. It doesn't feel the same. It doesn't drive the train. It doesn't drive the same. This thing is a freight train rolling down, man. And that those ghost notes really help to drive this thing. Uh, and so if you were to take a traditional shuffle and you know how to play a shuffle and straighten it out, you can see where he got this. So you can see that that adds a bigger element and depth to the groove by simply adding that is such a simple application of a very common groove. It's just it's just such a simple addition to it that makes it so much fatter. So anyway, that's what I wanted to break down with rock and roll was the intro, the confusing intro that starts on the upbeat of three uh, and then the simple groove that he uses and so beautifully and convincingly drives this train. And then the drum fills he does in this thing are amazing. Uh, we Again, we looked over it this past week in the live lessons and did a much more in-depth look than this. I mean, we spent half an hour picking this thing apart and really looking at the fills he was doing and why does that work? How can you use it in a live setting? If you were using this with a band, how could you easily get into it? We went into all those things. So if you ever want to subscribe to the live lessons, now would be the month to do it. I'm giving a free copy of my book away with every new subscription uh, and introduction to interdependence, which is all about five-way coordination, getting your head involved in what's going on and getting different rhythms being played on different limbs and being able to read rhythms at the same time. It's really uh, a pretty fun book to work through and we worked through it some of the live lessons. So um, that's about all I've got to say. Hope you guys enjoyed the lesson. And again, your question of the lesson is, what's your favorite Led Zeppelin tune? I'll catch you later.